dealer today for a $159 a month Civic lease. Because small has never looked so big. Or so small. Is Folgers in your cup? Today, I'm off to see the wonderful Wizard of Sod. And it may be chilly outside, but the weather is perfect for tackling some winter chores. Plus, we'll check in on my beloved bonsai. Cool. So here we are outstanding in your field. Uh, and what a field you got here. Well, thank you. How many acres of sod are you growing? Uh, about 1,500 acres total. Uh Today I'm hanging out with the sod father, George Biaggi, for a little turf talk. He's giving me the lowdown on turf grass and how it's farmed for your landscape. I'm from an area where we, we have both cool season and warm season grasses. So we have fescues and Bermudas, for instance, in my neck of the woods are the two most popular. Right. You've got a lot of fescue here. We've got a lot of fescue here and we've got some, we've got some hybrid Bermuda uh, that, we, that we like to use on for sports turf. With a clear view of Mount Diablo, the Blue Delta Company is located below sea level in the middle of the wet yet windy lands of Stockton, California. And you really couldn't ask for a better piece of land for growing grass. And we're basically on an island here. We're surrounded by water, so exactly. you got plenty of water to irrigate the field. Yes, we do. And so you just you pump it up. It comes over to the levee on a siphon because the water's higher than the land. So oh, so you don't have to pump. Right. And then when you get it to the field that you want to get it to, then you put on a pump to pressurize the sprinkling system. Which we can see here. You've got... Wow. You've got plenty of irrigation. Oh, yeah. Well, you need it. You, you, you really need it. Not only is the California Delta an endless supply of water, it's also a generous source of delicious and nutritious soil deposits for the green grass to grub on. So this is peat dirt. This is peat dirt. This is what we use, uh, have out here in the islands and in, uh, in the delta and, and uh, great this, soil. This is natural? This is natural. 30% organic matter. That is some fine looking stuff. It almost looks like bag sifted compost. Yeah. I'd like to take a truckload of this home. I bet you would. <laughs> <laughs> this really is a good place to kick it because the peat dirt goes down six to eight feet. And what gets me even more jazzed is the line of healthy, easy to care for native grasses growing here. You know, turf grasses in this country, the popular ones aren't native. Fescues from Asia, Bermuda's from Africa. Um, there is a, a resurgence now in buffalo grass. In, in my neck of the woods, buffalo grass is one that people are looking at because okay. it is native. But yeah, this, this move toward natives is, is a great way to go, I would think. To find out which grasses are native in your area, contact your local garden center. Native grasses are well adapted to their region, they're quite resilient to pests and diseases, and can be maintained easily with less water than non-natives. That's what we're hoping for, uh, to use it on different applications besides just homes. You know, we're thinking about maybe using it on highways and, and uh, uh, you know, mediums down uh, shopping centers and stuff like that. Still not tough enough for you? Did somebody say native blends? You know, a lot of times people do focus on one particular turf variety and I like blends myself simply because where one may not perform quite as well another one will kind of fill the gap so to speak and as the seasons change some respond differently to temperatures and all that if you go with one turf basically you got a monoculture and then all it takes is one pest or disease to come in and right wipe it out natives however may not always carry the perfectly manicured long look but their naturalness definitely makes the yard more interesting to gaze at. I really like it, frankly. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind having this as a turf grass in my place, but this is California and I live in Oklahoma, so I, I'd have to <laughs> switch things up a little bit. You bet. Different types of grasses are monitored in test plots to see which ones do the best in water and sunbathing contests. Once we get that done, then we put them all together and we get that blend and uh, we'll hopefully we'll be able to, to market that based on um, different applications. No, I think this is the future of turf science, coming up with more natives right. that are well adapted to a given region. When the grass is happily matured, it's ready for harvesting. Of course, with a plot this size, you're going to need more than just a hand tool. George, I've cut a lot of sod in my day, but I usually use a shovel. 
I need to borrow one of these. Yeah, this is a nice machine. It does two rolls at a time, stacks it, puts it in a pallet, and we're on our way. Real nice machine. I saw a roller out. You, you take a roller over the field first to prep it? Yeah, we roll it in, pack it in, set it up. That way, when the machine comes along and cuts it, the roots they stay together nice and tight. And uh, when we uh, transport it to the job site, it's uh, fresh and ready to go. The mean green sod slicing machine cuts to any standard size. This happy piece of grass covers 10 square feet and is two inches thick. Just lay it down like a carpet and uh, get the seams tucked in. Get a roller and then just start irrigating it uh, three or four times a week, depending on where you are and you're going. How long can this sit on the pallet? We like to cut it and, and plant it the next day uh, or within 12 or 14 hours, but it'll, it'll hold uh, for a day or so. Uh, but uh, you want to get it down, uh, plant it as soon as you can. Cut to order and never cut before it's time. Just the way it should be and just the way I like it. I wonder if I could take this back with me on the airplane because I got a spot right in my yard about this size I need to patch. Oh, do you? Patch. We might be able to handle that. Okay, we'll check. Flight approved or not, this baby's going home with me. The grass is always greener. Coming up, grab your hat and warm winter coat. It's time to get gardening. And I'll show you a few of my favorite cordless air purifiers. This program is brought to you by Key West in the Florida Keys. Key West 6 to get because you only have one life to live. When we speak to dentists, we find that acid erosion is a growing problem. Acidic foods or beverages can cause a softening of the enamel. It's things like soda pop, fruit juices, fruit. Once you lose enamel, it's gone for good. I would recommend Pronamel to reharden that softened enamel. Now, for those people who want white teeth, I would recommend Pronamel Gentle Whitening to help protect against acid erosion but also to help bring back your teeth to their natural whiteness. Right now, all over the country, Discover customers are getting 5% cashback bonus on travel. It pays to get more. It pays to discover. Julianne Huff has taught the stars to dance, Woo! and this is her hot new workout. You are going to see results so quick. Have fun dancing while you sculpt your legs, abs, and booty. Dance with Juliet Cardio Ballroom. Buy the DVD today at retailers nationwide. The Volkswagen Ruton is not only unique in its German tuned suspension, but in its maximum attention to detail. From individually operated DVD players, child monitoring mirror, <gasps> elegant leather seating surfaces, and wireless headsets, to its voluminous storage compartments. Make it the hero to any family. The Volkswagen Ruton with 0% APR and three years or 36,000 miles of carefree maintenance. A contractor promises an English-style bar in eight weeks. That was over a year ago. So we emailed Mike Holmes. I'm going to go to the extreme to create the pub look. Mike makes it right on an all-new Holmes on Holmes. Tonight at 10, 9 Central, HGTV. Can I go home and work in your yard with you? The first shopper to say yes will win the Landscape Lottery. You're going to yeah. come and redo our whole yard? The crash is on. Yard Crashers. See back-to-back -back episodes today at 9.30 on DIY Network. It's late winter, and I haven't had a chance to garden much. In part because the weather hasn't cooperated, but also because I've been traveling a lot. In fact, in the last 45 days, I've had over 22 flights and logged over 29,000 miles. Yeesh. But I'm ready to get a few things done today, beginning here in the veggie garden. The last time I really did anything out here was late last fall when I planted this garlic. Of course, it won't be ready to harvest for months, but it's looking pretty good. What's left of last year's lettuce crop under this little hoop house, however, is looking pretty bad. So I'll remove the dead foliage and toss it in the compost pile. I'll also remove, regrettably, this clump of parsley. 
Remember, parsley is a biennial, meaning it produces foliage the first year and then flowers the second year. But after it flowers, it doesn't produce near as much edible foliage. So I prefer to treat it as an annual and simply replant each year. Incredibly, this arugula still looks great, despite temperatures below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, I've been munching on it all winter. Although technically considered an annual, many varieties of arugula, especially the wild ones, behave more like a perennial because they reseed readily. That means I'll be munching on this stuff all year this year as well. And that's a good thing, because I love arugula. Mmm, you knew I was going to do that. Mmm, why not? Mmm. You may have noticed that the soil level in these raised beds has dropped considerably since I filled them last year with a mix of organic material, and that's not uncommon. The drop in the soil level is due in part to settling, but also because much of the organic matter that I added last year was simply used up during the growing season. Now, I'd hope to add some more organic matter today, but the bagged stuff at the nursery was frozen solid, so I'm going to have to wait a little while. And this year, I'll also be able to add some homemade compost from the bin I created and filled last year. I'll also be using this bale of wheat straw, both as a soil amendment and a mulch here in the veggie garden. And having left it out for the last six months or so throughout the winter months, it's just the way I like it. See how the straw is starting to turn almost black? Well, that's what happens when the straw is left out to rot and essentially turn into compost. And believe me, this is good stuff for the garden. Moving right along, it's time to address a few issues at my koi pond. The first thing I need to do is get more than a few leaves out of the stream. And the best way to do that is to first cut off the flow of water. Sure, I could pull the leaves out with the water flowing, but it's a lot easier to remove them from a dry stream. Besides, I can actually get in the stream to work. And getting rid of these leaves is important because they can have an adverse effect on the quality of the water. There's also a fair amount of algae that's begun to form, so I'll get rid of it too. And then I'll fire up the pump again and let the water flow. A number of weeds have begun to sprout in the path that surrounds this water feature, so I'll remove them with my trusty scuffle hoe. I'd also plan on adding some fresh mulch to the path, but the bags of mulch were frozen solid too. Now remember, you never want to use herbicides of any kind anywhere near a pond, especially if the pond contains fish because virtually all herbicides are toxic to fish. They might also destroy aquatic plants both in and around your pond. I'm still planning on removing a number of plants both in and around this water feature because so many of them are overgrown that they block the view of the stream and the pond. But I'm gonna wait a couple of weeks before I tackle that task, in part because it's not really the ideal time to transplant, but more importantly, <laughs> the water's really, really cold. However, I am going to cut back the ornamental grasses because late winter is the time to do just that. That way I can at least see more of the water feature and the grasses will be easier to dig up, divide and transplant when the time comes. My next project involves this wisteria that's been growing or rather overgrowing on the roof of this deck for the past three years. In fact, it's now growing up into a nearby tree which it may eventually strangle. So I'll cut it back hard using loppers for the larger branches and some hand pruners for the smaller ones. Wisteria can take aggressive pruning, and that's just what this one needs. Strictly speaking, I should have waited until after this wisteria blooms in late spring to do any pruning, because the flowers are born on one-year-old wood. But I've left plenty of one-year-old wood intact anyway, and, <laughs> well, this thing's never bloomed since I planted it. The last chore I'm gonna knock out today also involves pruning. In this case, a really beautiful and healthy knockout rose. On the one hand, knockout roses don't need to be pruned at all. But on the other hand, you can prune them all you want. In my case, I'm just gonna prune some of the branches in the interior portion of the bush, just to allow more air circulation and get rid of a few scraggly branches. Now with hybrid tea and floribunda roses, you usually trim all but three canes back to around 18 inches. But with these knockouts, you can do whatever you want. You can just open up the plant to allow more air circulation, which is what I've done. You can head the plant back a little bit to make it a little more compact. They'll take anything you throw at them. So with just a few more cuts, this baby will look like, well, a knockout. Well, that's it for today's chores, and I'm sure glad I picked a pretty nice day to get them done because the forecast tomorrow calls for freezing temperatures, ice, sleet, and snow. <laughs> 
Next up, we've got some easy houseplants that'll be sure to thrive for even the brownest of thumbs. Plus, how my bonsai fared the frigid winter. HGTV goes inside 10 over-the-top spaces in an all-new special, Million Dollar Rooms. When people walk into this garage, they gasp. We'll tour the most luxurious. $220,000. That chandelier cost us. The most exotic. Not many homes have bowling alleys. And the most expensive rooms on the planet. It was worth every penny. Million Dollar Rooms. All-new special. Tonight at 8, 7 central on HGTV. So many arthritis pain relievers. I just want fewer pills and relief that last all day. Take two extra strength Tylenol every four to six hours. Taking eight pills a day, and if I take it for 10 days, that's 80 pills. Just two Aleve can last all day. Perfect. Choose Aleve, and you can be taking four times fewer pills than extra strength Tylenol. Just two Aleve have the strength to relieve arthritis pain all day. Watching the bull and bear markets battle it out is not a retirement plan. So I switched to E-Trade and jumped on their retirement quick plan. It showed me the gloomy truth and let me run scenarios until I figured out how to eliminate my shortfall. Then I used their screeners to choose the right investments and build a diversified plan to keep me on track. Hey, my retirement plan needed work and E-Trade helped me get it done. Get a retirement plan that works at E-Trade. Which snack do you prefer? One that's full of sugar and artificial ingredients? Or one that's full of wholesome flavor? Discover cheese snacks from Sargento, the delicious yet nutritious alternative to ordinary snacks. From pepper jack and reduced fat Colby Jack sticks to mozzarella string cheese, our flavorful natural cheese snacks are individually wrapped so you can snack smarter anywhere, anytime. Sargento, for snickety people, exceptional cheese. True or false? Your pet is safe from fleas, ticks, and heartworms in winter. Sorry, it's false. And these guys can mean big trouble. Your pets need year-round protection, plus medications for cold weather joint pain. Fortunately, they cost a lot less at 1-800-PET-MEDS, and they're delivered free, right to your door with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. For fast service, free shipping, and big savings, call now or order online from 1-800-PET-MEDS, America's largest pet pharmacy. My name is Jim. Gregorio. I'm Al. Daryl. I got sick. I got sick. I got hurt on my job. I failed. I'm homeless. I'm homeless. I'm homeless. It could happen to you. It could happen to anyone. We need your help. Please help. Help us help them. Donate your clothes. Donate your shoes. Clean out your closet. Money helps too. Open your heart. Give. Give from the heart. It's a nice thing to do. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. This message brought to you by Comcast and the St. Vincent de Paul Society. This house has several powerful NASA-approved indoor air purifiers hard at work. Can you find them? Toxins like benzene and formaldehyde are being filtered clean out of the air thanks to these green machines. See them yet? It's surprising, but true. There's a lot of stuff right in your home polluting the air from carpets, smoke, cleaning supplies, building supplies, but a natural way to get rid of them? Plants. Think about it. House plants are tropical for the most part. In nature, they live in light filtered from taller trees, just like the light streaming in through your window. That's why even in low light, a plant can still photosynthesize and in the process absorb most indoor pollutants, rendering them harmless. Even potting soil and roots can suck up indoor air pollutants. That is, if the plant has soil and roots. Are you one of those people that kills every plant that comes into the house? I can be one of those people too, but look at this plant. This is a Tillandsia. It's an air plant. It doesn't grow with any soil. It's really fun. The care it takes to maintain this, well, you can dunk it every once in a while, or you can mist it. And you want to do this maybe once a week. That's all it takes to not kill this plant. That's why Tillandsia tops Jill's list of favorite houseplants. I love house plants because they're really long lasting and really many of them don't take a lot of care. If they do, they're not in my house. Some of you might be a bit skeptical about care and maintenance when you hear number two on Jill's list, ivy. I like a little structure in my house plants too. One of those plants would be 
ivy. If you're having trouble growing ivy, here's the secret. It has to spend as much time outdoors as indoors, and then you should be just fine. Ivy is popular as a topiary plant. Check out Jill's ivy tower. Okay, Rosie wants to show you how she makes her topiary with a hanger. So hang on, this is what you do. Put it upside down and pull it like that. We're making a tree shape in case you didn't know. There we go. And now we're going to pull this together. Now we need a piece of kind of heavy duty gauged wire and wind it around like that. Straighten the hook, push it into the soil and wind several vines around the wire. That looks good. So the way we maintain this is every once in a while you're going to have to give it a little haircut just so that you can really see the shape. Besides cleaning the air, houseplants are also known to reduce stress. When you're outdoors, of course you feel great, but you can bring that garden inside. Studies show that plants really do make you feel great. One plant that makes Jill feel great? Akinchia palm, number three on her houseplant hit parade. These statuesque beauties grow upwards of 12 feet indoors, and the more indirect light you give them, the more fronds they'll grow. Traditionally, house plants meant green plants. We'll take a look at these green plants. This dracaena has lime green and sort of a dark jade green and the stripe of the white. Simply beautiful. And then this rubber plant, its deep, deep, thick leaves really add drama to any home environment. Dracaena sneaks in at number four favorite house plant, followed by number five, the rubber plant. Before we can get to six, however, let's talk about repotting soil. Probably the only time you're going to think about potting soil is when you want to repot your plants. And you want to repot your plants when they've grown out of the pot, or maybe you want to plant plants together. This potting soil is just your basic everyday potting soil. You can buy it at the store. It's got a lot of compost in it, a little bit of perlite for drainage. This has got rocky material and sand, and it's for cactus and some bromeliads. Lastly, water can even be a potting soil. In the case of this lucky bamboo, which is actually a dracaena, not a true bamboo, Jill's sixth favorite houseplant, no soil is necessary, just a big old vase of water. Meanwhile, let's get number seven, the African violet, repotted in a lovely glass container. When you plant in glass containers like this one, you have to make sure you have good drainage. So we're gonna use charcoal to take up the extra water. And this is called garden charcoal. You can buy it wherever you buy your plants. And we're going to fill, oh, a good one or two inches with the charcoal. Charcoal does a great job of absorbing odors. And right on top of that goes several inches of potting soil. Potting soils have a time-release fertilizer already. At least most of them do when you buy their plants. So that's going to increase the longevity of your plant life right off the bat. In this glass container, you'll be able to see when the soil dries out. Otherwise, use the finger test. The finger test, you put your finger in the soil about an inch down. If it feels dry, water that plant. Careful poking your finger into a container full of cacti, though. Even so, here's a plant family Jill thinks more folks should take a stab at growing indoors. Cactus might be a little bit unusual as a house plant because it kind of does belong outdoors. But if you have very, very bright light, you can grow cactus inside, then give it a breather outside for a while. So you want to water your cactus just once a week. And in the winter, you don't water it at all. How about some bloom in the room? Flower power rounds out Jill's top 10 favorite house plants list. A house is not a home without flowering plants. And these orchids and bromeliads are gorgeous, very simple to take care of. A lot of people are intimidated by orchids, but you really don't need to be. Number one, they're not that expensive anymore, and number two, they're pretty easy to take care of. NASA, the agency that studied healthy effects of houseplants, recommends 15 plants located throughout the house to improve air quality, boost your mood, and gussy up the place. Just remember, grin with green and keep the air clean. When you buy a plant, it generally comes with a care tag, and it will tell you the temperature that the plants like most. If you can follow those rules, you're going to do well with houseplants. Spring is around the corner. Next, we'll check in with my bonsai to see what they thought of Old Man Winter.
A contractor promises an English-style bar in eight weeks. That was over a year ago. So we emailed Mike Holmes. I'm going to go to the extreme to create the pub look. Mike makes it right on an all-new Holmes on Holmes. Tonight at 10, 9 central on HGTV. Which crossover would you choose? The 2009 top safety pick? The class leader in highway fuel economy? Or a 2009 consumer guide best buy? How about all of the above? The eight passenger Buick Enclave. May the best car win. This is the beginning. This is where you meet. Not to plan out the rest of your lives together. At least, not tonight. Tonight, you're here for meatballs, conversation, and endless possibilities. And while no one can tell you where it will lead, it definitely begins right here. The beginning. Start yours today at Match.com. Uh, everyone, thanks for coming to our housewarming party. We really appreciate all the dip trays. We love dip. <laughs> oh. Honey, there's thousands of dollars in here. Great news. The Home Buyer Tax Credit has been extended and expanded so even more buyers can take advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity. Talk to a realtor for qualification details or visit houselogic.com slash homebuyer tax credit. Every market's different. Call a realtor today. Sitting in a Fortune 100 company? A good place to find yourself. And that's exactly where our graduates do find themselves in 96 of those Fortune 100 companies. Because we make sure our bachelor's degree programs meet the needs of businesses by working with businesses to develop our bachelor's degree programs. DeVry University. Discover education working at devry.edu. I take a 1% improvement to my day, but this makes my life a thousand times better. This new Purex Complete 3-in-1 laundry sheet cleans in the washer and softens and removes static in the dryer. Now, if it could just fold. Purex Complete 3-in-1. It's Purex. Extraordinary. But don't take our word for it. Get a free sample with the new enhanced fragrance at trypurex.com. First, you build the best. Then, you stand behind it. The five-year, 100,000-mile transferable powertrain warranty from Buick. With roadside assistance and courtesy transportation, it's the best coverage in America. You may recall that last spring I received several new bonsai trees, including evergreen, deciduous, and tropical varieties, all of which I carefully unpacked and put on display. Well, at the time, I wasn't too concerned about how they do during the spring, summer, and fall here in my neck of the woods, but I was concerned about how they do during the winter months, because winter around here can get pretty severe. But I'm pleased to report that on balance, they did really well. These evergreens, for example, look great. Now, on four different occasions, I did have to move them into the garage, twice for just a day or two and twice for nearly a week. That's because temperatures during those times dropped well below 20 degrees. In fact, at one point, the temperatures dropped well below 10 degrees. And although these trees should remain outdoors as much as possible, if their roots freeze for an extended period of time, they may not survive. Occasional freezes are fine, so long as the roots thaw out slowly during the day, and provided the plants are well watered before freezing temperatures arrive. Of course, I was prepared to heal these babies in the ground and cover them with shredded leaves or mulch. And next year, depending on the severity of the winter, I may be forced to do just that. I did heal in most of the deciduous specimens, however, and they too look pretty good. Obviously, there are no signs of new growth at the moment because these guys are dormant, but the scratch test, oh yeah, does reveal green tissue, which means in just a few weeks, they'll be leafing out, and at that point, I can put them back on display. I forgot to heal in this forest of redwoods, however, and the pot broke from the expansion of the freezing soil, so I'll have to repot these trees this spring. Ooh, I almost forgot. If you'd like to learn more about caring for bonsai or anything else you've seen on today's show, for that matter, just go to hgtv.com slash gardening by the yard. Finally, as you can see, the tropical bonsai, including this fairly large ficus and this cute little chef, Lara, did fine as houseplant, although they can't wait to go back outside when the time is right and where the humidity is higher. So basically, all my bonsai survived their first winter, and I'm thrilled. 
Now I can't wait to repot a few, do a little pruning, and try my hand at starting a few specimens from scratch. And come this spring, that's precisely what I'll be doing. Oh, hurry up, spring!